In this episode, I'm going to introduce four rules of inference and illustrate each one. We're still at the uh, Upper Golden Gardens Park in Seattle, Washington, and you can see behind me uh, this beautiful trail through this, the fall woods in this beautiful park on Seattle's uh, Puget Sound, above Seattle Puget Sound. So the first of the four inference rules is modus ponens, abbreviated MP. Now my demonstration is not meant to take the place of studying the course materials. You really do need to study the explanations and look at the examples. This is just to get you into it a little bit, just spark you into it. Modus ponens is an inference rule. An inference rule is a rule that tells you how to draw an inference. It tells you how to infer something from something else according to a specified recipe or rule. Modus ponens can be understood this way. It says from a statement of the form P horseshoe Q or if P then Q and from another statement that is the P part repeated of the P horseshoe Q the rule says you may infer the Q part of the P horseshoe Q. So for example to keep it simple suppose I have a statement A horseshoe B. Do you see how that is an instance of the form P horseshoe Q. The A replaces the P, the B replaces the Q, the horseshoe carries over, so this is an instance of the form if P then Q or P horseshoe Q. And then suppose I'm also given a second statement that's just the A. So do you see that this is the P part of the P horseshoe Q? So the rule says if we have a P horseshoe Q and we have the P part repeated of the P horseshoe Q all by itself, we're allowed to infer from that just the Q part alone of the P horseshoe Q. So this is if P then Q in form, this is the P part of the P horseshoe Q. So the rule allows us to infer the Q part of the P horseshoe Q, which is the B. And so if we apply this rule to those two statements, we derive this formula from these two formulas. So that's the modus ponens rule, abbreviated MP, and that's an illustration of its use. <clears throat> the next rule is abbreviated MT, the modus tollens rule, and it reads this way. If you have a statement of the form P horseshoe Q, and then you have another statement that's the negation of the Q part of the P horseshoe Q, the rule says you may infer the P part of the P horseshoe Q negated. So that means that if you have a statement of the form P horseshoe Q, and then you have another statement that's exactly like the Q, except that it has a tilde added to it, you may infer the statement that is exactly like the P part but with a tilde added to it. And that's called modus tollens. So for example, suppose I have a statement of the form A horseshoe B, and of course that's an instance of the form P horseshoe Q, where the A replaces the P, the B replaces the Q, so this is an instance of P then Q or P horseshoe Q. And in order to apply modus tollens, I need a statement that is the negation of the Q part of the P horseshoe Q. And that would be a statement that's the same as the Q part, with, but with a tilde added. So do you see how this is an instance of if P then Q? This is an instance of the Q part negated, because this is the same as the Q, but with a tilde added. And the rule would then tell me to infer the P part with a tilde added to it. In other words, the negation of the P. So the P part is the A. So I bring down the A. 
and then I add a tilde to the A per the rule. That's the modus tollens rule. When you read the course materials, you'll see lots of examples. You'll also see an explanation of why each of these is a valid rule and what that means. Let me show you something with modus tollens. Suppose I had a statement, not O, horseshoe, not G. Do you see how this also is an instance of the form if P then Q? Because the P part is replaced by not O or tilde O. The Q part is replaced by tilde G and the horseshoe carries down, making this an instance of this form. So if this is P horseshoe Q, this is P horseshoe Q. This is an instance of it, P horseshoe Q. So now the rule says I have to have the negation of the Q, a statement that's exactly like the Q part, but with the tilde added. And so modus, in order to apply modus tollens, I would need a statement that's exactly like the Q part, which is tilde G, with a tilde added. And if you're wondering whether that's well formed, it is. If you look at the second rule of grammar, the second rule of grammar says that if you have a well-formed formula and you add a tilde to it, the result is also a well-formed formula. So not G is well-formed, and so if I add a tilde to not G, the, the result is well-formed as well. And so that's a well-formed formula. And that is the negation of the Q part of this P horseshoe Q. And the rule says now that I bring down the P part negated. So the P part is tilde O. So I bring down the P part, tilde O, negate it. And so if I'm following the rule exactly as it's written, then from not, from tilde O horseshoe tilde G, and from tilde tilde G, I'll infer tilde tilde O, if I'm following the rule exactly as it's written. So that's how we do the modus tollens rule.